Jaden is back at it to give everyone another Dexter related video. Now that I've finished Dexter New Blood, it's time to re rank the seasons of Dexter from my least favorite season to my favorite season. Of course, before I do that, a few things you should know. This video is going to contain spoilers. So if you haven't watched all 96 episodes of the original Dexter and the 10 episodes of the Dexter New Blood, then I highly suggest that you don't watch this video any further to avoid potential spoilers. Also, I haven't rewatched the initial Dexter run since 2019 into 2020 before we found out that Dexter was indeed returning. And lastly, this ranking is going to be my ranking, not necessarily your ranking. In fact, I can guarantee that we are most likely going to disagree on some of my placements of these seasons. Make sure you leave your ranking in the comments section. You don't necessarily have to leave me a paragraph about each season. I know what happens in the seasons, but if you want to, that's fine. Just know that we're going to most likely disagree. I wonder if there's anybody out there that's going to share the same view on the seasons as me. That'll be interesting. So let's start the ranking off with the season that comes in ninth place, dead last. And for me, that's going to be Dexter season six. I've just never liked this season at all. There are a few things that I do like about this season. I do like the premiere episode where Dexter goes to his high school class reunion and he's actually the most popular person there where in, when in high school he wasn't popular at all. I did like that episode. I did like the character of Brother Sam, but then they went and fucking killed him off. And I did like the very last kind of scene with Dexter, you know, killing Travis Marshall and then Deb shows up and Dexter's like, oh God, I liked that stuff because that was a huge cliffhanger of the season. But there's a lot of stuff I didn't like. I didn't like the Doomsday Killer. I didn't like Travis Marshall specifically as the Doomsday character. I didn't like this twist that they tried to throw in that I saw coming from a mile away where Dr. Geller isn't really there and that Travis has been talking to nobody all along like Dexter does with Harry. I saw that coming a mile away and I just didn't feel like the season worked. I guess it was the whole religious aspect of the season, but for me, Dexter season six comes in last place. Now I know most of you will agree with me that Dexter season six is definitely one of the worst seasons of Dexter, but the season that comes in eighth place for me would be Dexter season three. Yeah, I know that's definitely going to surprise a lot of you. I just don't like this season. Now, I like it better than season six. In fact, I like it a lot more than season six. But I think the problem with Dexter season three is that it follows Dexter season two, where the first season, a little bit happened, but season two rams up everything. And then season three makes it go back down to what happened in season one, like the pacing of it. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. Miguel Prado starting off as a protagonist and then turning into the antagonist. He was okay but I just didn't like him that much. Like, I didn't really get into his character. I thought it was cool that Dexter was a able to share his ritual with somebody uh, and not have that person freak out like Harry did. And uh, unfortunately, that ne didn't necessarily work out as Miguel wanted to do this stuff on his own. But I just didn't feel like the season really delivered anything. And then you have this, you know, this, this tr Skinner thing happen throughout the whole season and then we finally find out who the Skinner is very late in this season. And he's very anticlimactic. All he does is skin Anton, but doesn't kill Anton. It just, it didn't work out for me. I know a lot of you will disagree, but that's my opinion. That's why Dexter season three comes in at number eight. The Dexter season for me that comes in in seventh place would be Dexter season eight. Yes, I know. How could I put that ahead of season three? And season six. Well, I'd just rather rewatch it more than those seasons. I enjoy it. Starting off, I liked Dr. Evelyn Vogel. I liked the fact that she worked with Harry to make the code. That was great. Deb was completely broken after killing LaGuerta. And then eventually her and Dexter get back on the same page with the help from Dr. Evelyn Vogel. I like that. I like the fact that Dexter was going to teach Zach the code until... Zach, unfortunately, was uh, killed off, which was unfortunate. But it was like the son that he never had, where he could teach things to. So I like that dynamic. I like the fact that Hannah came back, which I was sure that she was going to come back. But it took a few episodes for her to make an appearance. And then, in the end, 
Hannah and Dexter really wanted to be with each other. And Harrison really liked Hannah. And Hannah was the mom that he never had. Aside from all the nannies that watched him. Because Dexter was always out and about doing what he does. Uh, I liked that a lot. And I liked the fact that Hannah eventually got along with Deb. It took a while, but eventually they were on the same page. I really liked that. And Harrison really, really did like Hannah. And he lived happily with Hannah um, until she died of uh, cancer, according to the events of Dexter Newblood, which I'm skeptical of, but I guess it happened. So I liked all of that stuff. I thought that was really solid. The things I didn't like. Okay, so the beginning of the season, Maria... Le Maria LaGuerta has a bench named after her. That was dumb. I've already mentioned that I didn't like the fact that Zach was killed off. And I also don't like what they did with Hannah as far as... Hannah didn't change her appearance at all. There's probably wanted posters all over the place with that same look, blonde hair, and yet she does nothing to change her appearance, especially when she takes Harrison to the hospital. Uh, that, I thought, was very stupid. All in all, I like a lot of stuff. Now, of course, we have the finale. And there's a few things I don't like about that. So, the characters at Miami Metro really never got closure, at least at, at that point. Masuka, Quinn, and uh, Batista. They were just kind of left there to ponder things. And Dexter, you know, I think the end of Dexter, the original Dexter, was actually quite beautiful. You know, it sucked that Dev died, but... She was kind of annoying to me, all in all, I, I think. And Dexter is a story of tragedy. That's how Dexter is. So Deb dying and Dexter feeling like he has nothing left. So he doesn't even want to go back to Harrison and Hannah because he feels like death follows him everywhere. So he's trying to save them. So he calls and says, you know, uh, you know, I love you. Don't ever think differently. And until we talk again, and then throws his phone in the lake, and Dexter does drive into that hurricane. Dexter was trying to kill himself. Apparently, the hurricane wasn't strong enough. It totaled his boat, though, but Dexter survived and then decided that he wanted to live in isolation to try not to hurt anybody. And then we find out that he didn't kill anybody for nearly 10 years after that, when he killed uh, Saxon at the police station, or Miami Metro. Uh, he doesn't do any more killings until he kills... Matt Caldwell in the premiere of Dexter New Blood titled Cold Snap. So I like that. I, I really did like this season. I I hear a lot of people complain about it, and I'm I don't know why people are so hard on it. I feel like it's a lot better than season six, and I think it's better than season three, but hey, it's my opinion. I know you'll probably disagree with me. It is what it is, and that's why I chose Dexter season eight as my number seven. The Dexter season for me that comes in in Sixth place is going to be Dexter Season 1. What? How could I put Dexter Season 1 so low? Well, for me, and remember, this is my ranking of the Dexter Seasons. I didn't quite get into this season that much. It took a while for me to get fully invested into this show. I had lost a job in August of 2014 and got another job, but I didn't start until October of 2014. And that's why I started watching Dexter. Had I started that job sooner, I may not have finished Dexter. I may have stopped watching it. The episode that finally hooked me was the episode where Dexter goes into the hotel room, sees all the blood, faints, has to go outside and kind of gather his thoughts, and then Dokes is like, something finally got to you. That's when I started really liking this show and really getting into it. Obviously, from there, it was pretty fucking awesome. But before then... There were moments, but there was nothing that really caught me. Like, I could have easily stopped watching the show and never revisited it. Luckily, I did continue watching the show, and it's obviously one of my favorite TV shows of all time. As far as the season goes, specifically, I thought Dokes was an amazing character. He was fucking awesome. Dexter, of course, was pretty awesome. Masuka, he had his moments, but the rest of the characters in season one... I didn't really like. I never really liked Deb. I didn't like Rita. Batista never really figured anything out. LaGuerta was actually okay. Masuka, yeah, he, he had his moments, like I mentioned. But Dokes was fucking brilliant in this season. Dokes and Dexter, their whole back and forth stuff was some of the best stuff 
in the show. Now, as far as the 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 villain in the series, which was Rudy, aka Brian Moser, the Ice Truck Killer, that was okay. And because I wasn't fully invested until I think episode nine, the hotel room episode. I didn't even see that coming. I think if I would have thought about it more, I would have figured that out. Obviously, they let the audience know finally when you saw the uh, the mannequin in Rudy's apartment. But he was he was good. The twists of like long lost relatives or relatives you didn't know about being you know a killer or something like that it it can work for some moments, and I think it really did in this. The ending with uh, Rudy wanting to kill Deborah. I don't know why he really had to kill Deborah. What was his obsession with killing Deborah? He could have easily left her alone and just lived happily ever after with his long lost brother Dexter. So it is what it is. The episode has some, or I should say the season has some good moments, but it takes a while to really get into things. And that's why I chose Dexter season one as my number six. The Dexter season that comes in in fifth place for me has got to be Dexter season five. And actually this would be the Dexter season. If I had the time I would rewatch before doing this video, but unfortunately, I just don't have the time to watch the season. Well, if I did, it would take a long time, and I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible after Dexter New Blood. But there's a lot of things I like in this season, but there's a lot of things that are kind of eh in this season. Obviously, the Dexter is trying to recover from the loss of Rita. He kills, then he realizes that this character Lumen has seen him kill somebody. Lumen wants nothing to do with him. She thinks that he is going to kill her. And eventually they start to form a bond where she participates in the killing rituals, killing all these people that tormented her with this barrel girl stuff, and eventually killing her nemesis, Jordan Chase. And then while this is all happening, they develop a love relationship. And in the end, she decides after she kills her this Jordan Chase character that she wants nothing to do with this life and wants to go back to her old life. So that kind of made me happy and pissed off at the same time that this Lumen character said, fuck off, Dexter, I'm out of here. That was really annoying. I wish there would have been more with Lumen, as Julia Stiles did, I think, a, a decent job. As far as the other stuff that goes on in the season, Deborah's trying to find out what happened to these barrel girls. And in the end, she has a chance to, you know, solve a case. And then she decides to turn her back and go away because she feels like that was the vigilante stuff was doing them justice. So it was just weird how this season ended or went, I should say. I like the, the episode with Astra returning and then you find out her friends getting abused by her dad. And I like how Dexter and Lumen handled that. That was really good. I'm tr See, I'm trying to remember the other stuff in this episode or this season and it's a little foggy in my head. So all in all, it's a decent season, but there's just, it's not the same, and that's why Dexter Season 5 is my number 5. The Dexter Season that comes in, in 4th place for me, has got to be Dexter New Blood. What? How could you put that so high? The ending sucked. Well, I do agree the ending definitely wasn't the ending we were expecting. We were expecting an ending that would break the internet. Well, it did in a negative way, and the ending was very anticlimactic. I think the ending in some sorts was actually beautiful. I know some of you are going to disagree with that, but I really enjoyed this season. It was my first experience of watching Dexter with everybody else as I didn't start watching the original Dexter series until it already had aired in 2014 when the, the final season aired in 2013. And I absolutely loved it. Now I admit there's a lot of things that are unanswered and things that were left hanging with. First of all, a lot of the characters that we met in Dexter New Blood, they had little to no development. Like, really, the show was focused on Deborah. I'm sorry, not Deborah. Dexter, Angela, Harrison, a little bit of Audrey, and Deborah's ghost. That's really all that we got. We got to know Kurt, but did we fully understand why Kurt did what he did? I think we kind of got an explanation, but I don't think it was a good explanation. There's a lot of, obviously, missing things that we didn't see in an episode, like who put the letter in Angela's mailbox, which they said on a podcast that Kurt Caldwell did it, but that's something we should have saw. How the hell did Kurt Caldwell find out that Dexter killed Matt? Did they, they didn't answer that. That's a pretty big unanswered thing. They brought Batista back. They had another scene with him in the finale. And then he finds out that Dexter Morgan is still alive. And he says he's on his way. And that's it. 
I mean, is Dexter really dead? In my mind, it, my mind tells me that this has to continue and Batista and Dexter have to have another scene. Now, I know you laid there motionless and he's pretty much shot around the heart area, but I mean, stranger things have happened in television. I'm really upset that they decided to kill Hannah McKay by giving her cancer off screen and that's how she died. We have this Harrison character that shows up and we really have no proof that he was ever really Harrison other than the things that he says. I thought there should have been a little bit more to it, like showing some highlights of him in Argentina with Hannah. That would have made like everything flow better, in my opinion. But for some reason, despite its flaws, I really enjoyed this, this season. Now, obviously, Angela was figuring out things that a whole homicide team or Miami Metro couldn't figure out in eight years, but she's just connecting the dots left and right. While that was annoying, it was also suspenseful, and it made me on it. It essentially had me on the edge of my seat, waiting for the next episode. So I could go on and on and on and on and on about Dexter New Blood, but let's just leave it at that. But that's why I chose Dexter New Blood as my number four. The Dexter season that comes in in third place for me has got to be Dexter season seven. But in my opinion, arguably the most underrated season of Dexter. This is actually a phenomenal season. I really like it. First of all, you have a villain in Isaac Serko, who's a part of the Kashka Brotherhood, who comes into town because his friend uh, is missing and he's trying to find out what the fuck happened to him. And he's a fucking badass. Like, he's James Bond 007 badass. Goes into this bar full of rival people and just kills them all by himself. What a badass. And then in the end, he kind of becomes an ally to Dexter for a very short time. But he's awesome, and they easily could have became friends had circumstances been different. So Isaac Serko, very underrated villain on Dexter. And then, of course, you have LaGuerta, who's looking more into the Bay Harbor Butcher case and trying to clear James Dokes' name and actually finds out a bunch of shit, has surveillance footage of Deborah at the church or around the church pumping gas. Like, how? why was she already there? And then, uh, you know, she finds out all this stuff. Unfortunately for La Guerta, Dexter gets her in a situation where he's trying to set her up. Uh, and then he decides that he doesn't want to hurt her. Then Deb shows up and decides that she chooses Dexter over La Guerta or, you know, over her career and shoots and kills Maria LaGuerta, who could arguably can be considered a villain on Dexter, even though she's really not a villain. So there's that. The only thing that I really didn't like about the season, it's not a big deal, the whole strip club thing with Quinn and Batista going to the strip club, and then Quinn having a relationship with this dancer, that was okay, but I could have done without that. But the stuff with Isaac Serko, the stuff with LaGuerta investigating the Bay Harbor Butcher, and then Deb killing... LaGuerta at the end. And of course, the finale of the season, we hear the famous line, surprise motherfucker, we have a cameo by a James Dokes, which was fucking awesome. And all in all, I really loved Dexter season seven. I st stand by the fact that it's very underrated and that's why it's my number three. I have arrived at a very tough choice. The two remaining seasons of Dexter are both phenomenal fucking seasons of Dexter. Not just Dexter, but of any TV show that I've ever watched. But, unfortunately, I can only pick one. So, coming in at number two for me has got to be Dexter Season 2. We start off with Dexter's... All of Dexter's victims' body parts being found in the ocean... And then because of this, you bring in Special Agent Frank Lundy, who's an expert on serial killers. And then he's there to try to find out who the Bay Harbor Butcher is. You have all the stuffs between Dokes and Dexter in this season. Especially the episode where Dokes shows up at the NA meeting and then says, like, I knew there was something off about you. You just stay put and stay out of my way and we won't have any problems. By the way, you owe me a new Michelin, motherfucker. That was fucking awesome. Obviously, Dexter, Dokes finally figuring out that he is the Bay Harbor Butcher and then Dexter locking him up in the cage and them having that bonding moment and Dexter saying that he's going to turn himself in. That was all fucking crazy. You have the introduction of Lila, who's actually one of my favorite characters on Dexter. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but I couldn't stand Rita. 
and I absolutely liked Lila. Now, Rita did get better in this season, but I still like Lila over Rita. She was fucking crazy. Obviously, I'm a little pissed off in the end. Dokes is locked in his cell. He gets out, or his cage. He gets out, and then Lila blows the building up, and Dokes dies because of, because of Lila. Fucking crazy stuff. Deborah or Deb gets into a relationship with this old geezer, Frank Lundy, and she actually really loves him. That was uh, unexpected. Deb has some relationship issues to get involved with somebody that else, but it was just a crazy season. The only real reason why I chose this as my number two, the finale of the season, it starts with Dokes dying. The finale should have ended with Dokes dying. That would have probably changed everything. I still love this season. I absolutely love it. I... Uh, words can't describe how much I love Dexter season two. It's fucking awesome. I have a tough time choosing which season I like. I always go with the remaining season, but this one, I just kind of go, well, do I like season two a lot? I mean, you know, season one of Dexter was like this. This season started up and went like that, like all of a sudden, like shit. This should have been the finale of Dexter. Dexter should have ended with like a manhunt or something like this, but all the other seasons haven't duplicated it, but all in all, I absolutely love season two, like I've said a million times now. But unfortunately, it's only my number two. By process of elimination, I'm sure that you've already figured out my number one favorite season of Dexter, which has to be Dexter season four. This was a brilliant fucking season of Dexter. It was very hard to top Dexter season two, but this did it with the introduction of John Lithgow is Arthur Mitchell, the Trinity Killer. He was just dark, devious, and like weird and played such a good role on Dexter. You have Dexter's relationship with Rita. Dexter always going out and Rita questioning where the hell he goes all the time. And like Dexter breaking that light and Rita's like, what the fuck? And then this season also has three of my favorite episodes of Dexter of all time. Uh, they're probably top six. Dex takes a holiday where he... Ends up killing that female cop. I fucking love that episode. And then you have, obviously, Hello, Dexter Morgan, the 11th episode of the season. And then, of course, the getaway, the finale. And when the internet actually broke, watching Dexter, the what we had of the internet, at least at the time, this season is just awesome. With Dexter trying to figure out how this guy that's a serial killer actually also has a family life. And then Deb and Lundry, Lundy trying to figure out who this serial killer is. And then Lundy possibly figuring out who it is because he walks by him. And then he's like, white male, 60s, six foot, whatever. And then you have the twist where Trinity, Arthur Mitchell, actually has an older daughter, Christine, that's been sleeping around with Quinn. Well, because they're getting close to Trinity, she kills well, she shoots and kills Lundy and shoots Deborah Morgan to try to get them to think it's part of the vacation murders. And it's just a crazy fucking season. And then, of course, the suspense, which I've already alluded to it. That episode, Hello, Dexter Morgan, where Trinity and Dexter are playing a cat and mouse game. And then the end of the episode, Trinity, Trinity's at, uh, or Arthur Mitchell. Arthur Mitchell is at Miami Metro. And he walks up to Dexter and looks at his name tag. Hello, Dexter Morgan. That shit was fucking amazing. I loved it. And then, of course, you get to the end of the season where Dexter is finally taking care of Trinity, but he kind of says something before he does it. He kills Trinity. He gets home. He's expecting Rita to be gone, and she doesn't answer her phone, but her phone rings in the house, and then he goes in the bathroom, sees Harrison sitting there, and then Rita ends up being one of Trinity's victims, and that... Apparently broke the internet, although I wasn't watching Dexter when it happened because I didn't start watching Dexter, as I've stated numerous times in this video, until 2013, 2014 when the show ended in 2013. So all in all, this season of Dexter is fucking amazing. Again, that episode, Dex Takes a Holiday with the Female Cop, loved it. Hello, Dexter Morgan and The Getaway, all amazing episodes of not just Dexter, but of any TV series. And that's why Dexter Season 4 comes in as my number one. So what did you think of my ranking? I know my ranking is weird, and I know we disagree. Just make sure you leave your ranking in the comments section. If you're a fan of Dexter or Dexter Nubla and you like this show or you like JDEV TV, make sure you smash that like button. 
If you want to share this with anybody or any one of your social media platforms, go ahead and do so. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. Subscribe to the channels. I'm always trying to grow the channel, but I need your help. Join the team, show your damn support, and of course, be a part of something special. And JDev will return.